Hello everyone, my name is Emilio de Chosa, a student at the University of Salamanca, and I'm here to present the following study about the modeling of muscle scene simulations based on finite elements using 1D elements, growth type, for the simplification of the muscle. The main objective of this study is to find a simplified way of modeling muscles within a human joint so that the same finite element model can be used to carry out analysis of the joint in different positions. The analysis of muscles by means of the finite element method has been carried out on several occasions. However, the treatment has been based on the use of 3D elements that are supported by the real geometry of the muscle. The main problem that occurs is that the muscles, being a geometry that varies in the travel of the joint, require that the muscles should be messed for each of these positions, which makes it impossible obtaining a unique finite element model that can be used for various positions. In our study, as can be seen in the image at the bottom, the muscles are simplified as 1D elements, growth type, allowing us to have different positions of the joint reusing the generated mass, and so analyzing with this unique mass the joint at any position. The procedure to obtain the finite element model starts from images obtained by nuclear magnetic resonance, from which we can obtain a CAD model of the geometry to be analyzed. In our case, this task was carried out using Geomagic Design X. After the CAD model has been obtained, it must be exported to a finite element software, in our case FEMA, in which we can carry out the, their messing. The images at the bottom show the mess of the bones, cartilage and ligaments. In the first two cases, a 3D element has been used, and in the case of ligament, exprint them per elements were chosen. Regarding the work of mass in the muscle, it must be taken into account that the strength of the muscle is related to the length it has, referred to its nominal length. As can be seen in the graph, the maximum force that the muscle can develop corresponds at its nominal length, and the force it can develop decreases as the muscle lengthens or shortens with respect to it. This doesn't mean that the muscle at a certain length develops a certain force, but that it can develop the maximum indicated force in that graph. On the other hand, it must be taken into account that the muscle only develops traction, traction efforts. With these two conditions, it's not possible to find a typical element of a finite element software that behaves like a muscle. The study, therefore, has to be divided into study the triceps and biceps muscle separately, obtaining the effort that the muscle is capable of developing in a specific state of flow. In order to maintain the possibility that a mesh use can be reused in different positions, the insertions of the tendons in the bone must be done in such a way that, when any of the bones of the joint are moved, the affected muscles automatically move to their new position. Using a single node from the muscle to insert the tendon into the bone causes an unwanted stress concentration, so it's preferable to use a rigid element for distribution of efforts in the area of, ins of insertion. It refers to the blue element at the image at the bottom of the, of, the, of the image. The only condition that this rigid element must fulfill is that its central node must be contained in one of the nodes of the bones. So, when the bone is moved, the central node is moved, and also the rigid element is moving, moving as well the muscle element. With all these simplification and, and, and meshing techniques applied to the joint, the results obtained are focused on the stress maps in the joint, but especially in the effort that appear in the muscle of the same. In our case, two different analyses have been carried out, one for the study of the biceps muscles and the other for the triceps, mu triceps muscles. In both cases, an opening in the articulation of 74 degrees a vertical joint of 150 newtons, vertical ascending or ascending as appropriate, and the fixed scapula has been considered. The result obtained regarding the forces in the muscle can be seen in the touch table. The stress maps are congruent with the state at load states, the maximum stress values being those indicated in the image. The initial objective of the study has been achieved. We have obtained a model of the elbow joint that can be analyzed in different positions. The result of the effort in the muscle are below the nominal values of the same, which makes sense, and we can analyze the muscles of the joint separately, long and short biceps separately, for example. 
The next steps to be taken in the complete, to complete the study are to perform the calculation in different positions of the joint, obtaining a relationship between the applied load and the response of the muscle, and draw up a predictive model of the muscle capacity as a function of the applied load. Thank you very much for your time and attention.